A binder clip holding a stack of colorful note cards drops down in front of a blue and pink watercolor sky. The top note card reads, Principles of Prevention. Did anyone ever tell you that you had the power to change the world when you were young? Think about it for a moment. What did that mean to you? Did it mean you would be a superhero who would fly and save people from villains? Animated geometric figures of people wearing capes zip through the clouds. A figure standing on a dark cloud shoots purple energy at one of the cape superheroes. Another superhero flies into the purple villain and knocks them off their cloud. A word bubble exclaims, pow. Or did it mean you would be a firefighter working all hours of the day and night to prevent tragic events and disasters? A firefighter climbs a ladder and uses a fire hose to put out a flaming tree. Maybe you were going to be a scientist or an astronaut and change the world through discovery. A scientist holds up a bubbling beaker. A colorful rocket ship blasts into the air, passing a planet and its small gray moon. Birds swirl past a painted silhouette of a skyline. A diorama of a city park appears, with a popsicle stick fence and polished stone walkway. A smiling animated woman with glasses stands on the walkway by a small paper garden. We all thought about how we'd change the world when we were young. But now that we're older, changing the world may mean something completely different than it did when we were kids. Still, one thing's certain. We all have the power to change the world. Even if we're not wearing capes, fighting fires, or exploring space, no matter how old we are or where we live, we have the power to change our communities by keeping them free from violence so that our children can grow up in safe and healthy environments. This training will take you on a journey through all the places where you have the power to impart positive change and prevent violence from happening. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. A binder clip drops down beside her, holding note cards to illustrate her points. The truth is that violence, in all of its forms, is far too common. In our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, and in our communities. Violence is more than just the physical injuries we see on the outside. It affects us on the inside, too, with emotional and psychological scars that can last a lifetime. Violence is also a costly problem and places a terrible burden on our society. Combined, all of these factors make up what we call the burden of violence. She gestures to two billboard-like structures in front of the city skyline. A brunette woman appears on one of the screens. A note card beneath it reads, Phaedra Corso, PhD, University of Georgia. Burden can be defined by mortality or morbidity, looking at the incidence and prevalence of disease. And economic burden is another component of measuring burden. Silhouetted birds fly past the screen and back to the narrator on the walkway. She points to a binder clipped note card reading, mortality equals death. Mortality means death. We measure mortality attributable to violence by counting the number of homicides and suicides resulting from violent actions. Morbidity in this context refers to injuries and disease associated with violence. These injuries and diseases can have both short-term and long-term consequences that affect a person's health. And, as we just mentioned, violence also takes a tremendous toll on the economy, known as economic burden. Economic burden is measured through direct and indirect costs, like expenses associated with medical and mental health care, absenteeism, and lost productivity. The breakdown of community infrastructure, decline in property values, and disruption of social services are other examples of the economic burden associated with violence. Tan and purple construction paper shuffles over the screen, then reveals a woman's face on the second billboard. A note card introduces Phaedra Corso, PhD, University of Georgia. When you break that arm because of the violent act, you may have to stay home from work for a week. And when you stay home from work for a week, it impacts your employer in an indirect way. Um, it may impact your pay. It, you know, if it's a child that's been, um, that's a victim of violence, the, the child may lose um, education for that time where they're not at school. And so we consider those the economic costs and is a, a much broader um, and more significant impact on violence. The other billboard screen snaps to life, and a gray-haired man in a suit appears. A note card reads, Rodney Hammond, PhD, retired, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The failure to address uh, violence when it occurs, it leads to uh, economic disinvestment, 
uh, deterioration of neighborhoods uh, and, and many other effects like that. On another screen, a man with a goatee appears. His note card reads, James Mercy, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Even if you aren't a victim of violence, it affects the quality of life in your neighborhood. One thing we're finding, for example, is that people live in neighborhoods uh, at high rates of violence aren't as likely to go out and exercise, aren't as willing to go out into their neighborhood and enjoy the parks and the, and the, and the other facilities that may be around them. Colorful paper swipes across the screen, revealing the narrator on the garden's walkway. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, also referred to as CDC, has been working to prevent violence since the late 1970s. CDC officially established the Division of Violence Prevention within the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control in 1993. James Mercy, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, reappears on the billboard screen. We have a vision at CDC of creating a society where people live a better quality of life, live a healthier life, because violence is not a part of their life. One of the things we CDC found when it first got involved in the field of violence prevention was that nobody was focused on trying to prevent violence before it occurs. We used to look at violence uh, solely as a crime or medical issue. Our major task at that time in our history was to convince people that violence was indeed a health problem. That was 25, 30 years ago. That's changed. The narrator smiles as the stack of note cards dangles beside her. One card reads, Criminal Justice versus Public Health. A smaller card hanging underneath it reads, Where does violence fit in? By looking at violence through a public health lens rather than a criminal justice one, we are able to take a universal approach toward identifying risk and protective factors and implementing preventive measures. Ultimately, we don't only want to bring perpetrators to justice, we want to prevent violence from happening in the first place. We'll explore this concept further a little later. James Mercy, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, reappears on the billboard screen. And what public health brings is a really a new way of looking at it. How can we prevent these events from occurring in the first place? So we don't have to spend all that money, time, and effort in reacting to the problem after it occurs. A man in a collared shirt appears on the other screen. A note card introduces Thomas R. Simon, PhD, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. At CDC, we're focused on the, the primary prevention of violence, which is preventing violence before it happens. James Mercy. And that's our role. That's our primary uh, focus and niche, and it's a very important one and a gap that we're filling. We're in this because we want to create better quality of life for people in this country and around the world. Thomas R. Simon. We study um, the range of different types of violence, from child maltreatment, youth violence, intimate partner violence, sexual violence, as well as suicidal behavior. James Mercy. Exposure to violence, particularly types of violence such as child maltreatment and intimate partner violence, are risk factors for depression, for um, anxiety disorders, for uh, smoking, for drug substance abuse, um, for obesity, all things that contribute in turn to some of the leading causes of death for all Americans, such as heart disease and cancer. A dangling note card reads, please click the next module button below to proceed. A yellow arrow points to the bottom right corner of the screen. 